American sports themed segment and it's sponsored by Taxbet. We've got some pretty groovy things going on which we'll tell you about a little later on but right now we'll introduce our expert Colin Scott. It's great to have you on board mate. Really great to be here. Great to be here. Thank you. Now I know it's it's not really an old topic. We know the news was released a few weeks ago now but the saga will go on for some time I suspect because news is leaking out about Jared Hayne in the US. Jared's going to LA. Jared's going to Vegas. Jared's meeting an agent whose agent's agent is talking to him. another agent. So tell me what do you think of this mate? I mean you, you're the guy who knows how it's all done. I know you've been interviewed about this extensively, but how tough is it going to be for him? Well, uh, to be honest, I'm very confronting, really. You know, the, the most intimidating thing, going over there and, you know, never played the game before 29, I just think he's going to find it very, very difficult. Um, intimidating, you know, going suddenly against, you know, guys at 170 kilos, suddenly putting that helmet on your head, everything changes, Billy. You just mm. kind of suddenly walk into a car crash. And look, full credit to him for having the balls to have a go. I really respect it. But in reality, I'll say this, it's really a disrespect for the NFL because for him at 27, seven years of age to go over something say I want to play in the NFL mate I paid my five years due in college to get that right mate so let's yeah. bring it back to perspective but you know what he's having a go the guys you know go, he's got the right intentions he always afraid of is, is failing and, and and I say let's get behind him Australia as long as he stays humble doesn't take himself too seriously um, he's got a chance yeah yeah fair enough too now, Colin, in the past, uh, AFL uh, players in, in the main have gone over and become uh, punters or kickers. Yeah, they don't count. Because... No, 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 no. Who's a pick up a jogger? If you ever going to try and create a pathway, or even, would it be possible for them to create a pathway that they become actual position players? And if so, what? A bloody highway. A highway. Um, look, there's a lot of kids I know that are dreaming about it right now, about, you know, taking on this dream. Um, HG, there's no question if he was able to see be one of the greatest sporting you know, accomplishments in the history of, you know, sports in Australia. Um, and that's a fact. Too. Look, uh, the beauty of it is he's created a lot of momentum. It'll, it'll, America's talking about it. Australia's talking about it. It's going to help rugby league. At the worst, he's going to come back with more knowledge faster. He'll meet a few girls. He'll have <laughs> <laughs> memories. But he's going to come back a much better person person for it and you know he gets a year off league which I think he needed he was tired he was bored let him find a challenge he's only come to come back and kick ass the following year so what's he got to lose Cole, what about the other football codes in, in Australia and New Zealand or the Southern Hemisphere? Because I know there was a lot of talk about John Lomu after his sort of stint in rugby where he blew everyone away at the World Cup and they were talking he was going to go over and play as a uh, next big thing. Yeah. Do you reckon any other codes? Like obviously AFL with the kickers, but is there any any particular winter sport you think which would be more suited than rugby league? No, I don't. You know, it's, you know, it's, I, what, what's interesting, you know, we have one football code and uh, so we have four football yeah. codes in 24 million. America has three 40 million in one football code. It, it just gets hard to explain. We don't know what competition is. We don't know what competition is, mate. And for Jared to go over there, you know, one football code for 340 million people, mate. And all, every kid is trying as a five-year-old to, to get to the NFL, mate. It's, it's, it's awesome even to think that he's comprehending it. I just want him to stay real and stay humble because he's going to be in for a big shock, mate. And he, he's going to get there. He's going to have a yellow phone book that big of information. And the trouble is they don't know what position he's going to play. So... Mm. Each position has its own 500 because you've got to know what the 11 guys yeah. on your team are doing and you've got to know the 11 guys on the opposite. It's very, the most intense, complex, explosive game in the world. <laughs> Well, on that subject, on that subject, <laughs> Dallas has just played Jacksonville at Wembley. Third time they've done it, and they're sold out again. Mm. Now, we know that there's been a Euro League that didn't quite, you know, last the distance. So what, what does that mean, Cole, about, you know, about the sport and what it, what, what it can do in, in Great Britain, at least? I'm amazed that the, the Bill's already got, you know, we're only halfway through the year, and they've had three games at Wembley already and sold out. Look, the major issue is the time change. You know, for these teams just to go off in the middle of the regular season and go and perform over in London is a big, big deal. Um, look, as you say, the leagues tried to go worldwide. It didn't work. But there is obviously something going on here that is making the NFL um, more powerful and wealthy by going over to Wembley. And there might be a team. It's just the time zone. I played in Hawaii. I know what time zone does. It just, it just the, the, the jet lag. It'll, it'll affect the players. But, gee, for three sold-out games already halfway through the season, yeah. there's a massive, obviously, momentum going in London. So, the, the, yeah, I hope it does. It'd be awesome. Maybe Australia could be next. <laughs> well, if, if 